Welcome everybody to the film room and on this episode we're going to take a look at Miami defensive end Jalen Phillips and Phillips is a prospect that a lot of people are buzzing about. Uh, he started his career at, at UCLA, transferred to Miami and in this past 2020 season had a tremendous year and a lot of people are talking about how he's the best edge pass rusher in the 2021 NFL draft and where could he go. So what we're going to do, if you're not familiar with these videos, is I'm going to take a look at the game tape, and I'm going to highlight different plays to, to kind of showcase the type of prospect that Jalen Phillips is, and then I'll get into, you know, maybe a comparison, uh, where he could go, so on and so forth. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the tape. Now, whenever we get into a, a, a pass rusher, we always want to see, can they win around the edge? Can they win with speed? Can they beat that left tackle or right tackle around the edge to put that pressure on the quarterback? And against Clemson, we definitely saw that with Jalen Phillips. On this clip right here, maybe we see Phillips coming off that edge. He's able to use a kind of like a SWAT type move to flush out, to flush out Trevor Lawrence and make him flee. Now, you would love to see Phillips be able to finish on this play. But as we see here, he's able to get to that edge with speed. And then he's able to use a SWAT move to get by him and go get Trevor Lawrence. All right, later on in the game, he's, he's lined up. He lines up always as that left defensive end. So he's going against these right tackles. And we see later in the game. So we saw first he was able to beat with speed and kind of that, that SWAT swim type move to get around the edge on this play Phillips is able to push the edge and he gets in he the the right tackle gets his hands on him but he uses that ankle flexibility he's bending his ankles to turn that corner and he's not able to finish but he's nearly there and and you just, once again, just see the athleticism. You see the bend, even though he's not sinking his hips and turning. He's able to still turn that corner to get to the quarterback. All right, so against Clemson, we saw that speed and that athleticism and the ability to turn the corner to get to the quarterback. But another thing that you want to see out of, out of pass rushers is their effort. So what happens when that corner's cut off and they can't get around it? Do they have the effort to, to redirect the, the motor to kind of keep going? And that's what you see right here in Jalen Phillips against Duke is he's able to push the edge and he initially gets stopped. He gets stopped right there by the, uh, the, the right guard and he doesn't really have a gap to shoot through, but he doesn't stop. He's able to just keep going and then a nice little spin move off to get the sack. Now we've seen the effort. We've seen the speed and, and, and what about the power? And having that power and that ability to bull rush is so important for a pass rusher because if you're going, you're, you know, you're winning with speed, you go with speed, that those tackles, they've got to get out deep to, to stop you. And if you've got a good bull rush, you can transition that speed to power and really put offensive tackles on skates. And that is exactly what happens here against NC State. Jalen Phillips is down here on the left side, continues to be that left defensive end, and he's able to just straight up bull rush this left, this right tackle right into the quarterback. Now it's pretty nice that the quarterback is able to maintain his poise and make that completion, but Jalen Phillips is able to just drive that, that right tackle all the way back and nearly right into the, the quarterback for a sack. Now you also want to see pass rushing moves. You can't win in the NFL with pure speed and athleticism. You have to have pass rushing moves to, to get to the quarterback. And in this case, we're going to see Jalen Phillips right here. And he's going to do a nasty spin move. So as we see, he's stopped here. Initially, the edge is, is not there. But he's able to let make a quick spoon move inside. I like how he had that hand in there to kind of keep the left, the right tackle at bay. And then he that, that causes the quarterback to get flushed. He's able to look then, just put a foot down, and turn and chase after him, uh, flushing him out of the pocket. And this is just such an explosive pass uh, spin move. You know, you see he puts it there, and I just love how he uses that, that left hand to kind of leverage himself off of to get into the the backfield to flush that quarterback out. Now Miami also used 
Jalen Phillips uh, some inside as an interior pass rusher, and we see it on this play right here. He's going to be matched up against this right guard, and he just once again shows a nice spin, uh, swim move there. So we saw the spin. We saw him going with speed. We saw him going with power. Now let's see him use a swim move here. He'll just burst off and just a quick uh, hand over to get that sack. If we watch it in slow motion, just a quick just hand, you know, kind of like a little you know, club and then a handover and just using that speed and athleticism to get by him. And then later, er, another example of that, that, that swim move. And this is against the, the right tackle this time, just able to just make that quick swim move in. And we're able to see that swim move uh, once again, later you know earlier in the game, this time against the right tackle. And he just, once again, is just able to use that quick move and then with his power and speed break through and cause the quarterback to step up and do a sack. And then one more time, that swim move, he's just so quick and explosive with this move, and he just flies in there uh, to get his hand on the quarterback. And the thing about him is he doesn't need this, this total powerful move because he's so quick, because he's so explosive. All he needs is just a little bit to get by and then go attack that quarterback. Okay, another clip to kind of show off the athleticism that we have in, in Jalen Phillips and even his power to kind of rush through blocks. He's going to be lined up at the top of the screen and he's going to loop to the inside. That The defensive end's coming, he's just able to just scrape right off of him, go in and get a sack. Normally, when he's able to get his hands on the ball carrier, whether it's the quarterback or the running back, he's not going to miss tackles. You know, he may have to flush quarterbacks out and he, that's what happened a lot because he was able to rush in and the quarterback saw him coming and and ran but if he's able to get his hands on you you're finished and then the last clip that i want to show just shows his awareness and his understanding and duke's gonna run a double revert or a reverse and so they're gonna go out and the ball's gonna come back to him but he's able to read this he's he's trailing he's unblocked Duke's hoping that he comes flying this way, and then when they hand the ball off here, he's around the corner for a big gain, or at least a first down. On, on This is fourth and two. But he's able to quickly read this, and then it shows his athleticism. Not only does it show his recognition and, and he's playing under control, but it sh he's able to quickly react and get out to make this you know huge loss that was on fourth down. So if we see the play in full, able to come off hard, oh, quick react, get outside, and get that tackle for loss. There is so much to like about Jalen Phillips as a prospect. If, you know, based off of his t film alone and his, you know, he, he had a tremendous pro day, you know, running in the low four sixes, you know, showing off of his, his explosiveness. Based off his timing numbers, based off of his tape, it's legit that Jalen Phillips should be a top 10 pick. And you would think he's not lasting past the Giants at 11. But the problem with Jalen Phillips is, is, as I mentioned at the start, he transferred from UCLA to Miami. But while he was at UCLA, he battled wrist and concussion inju injuries. And at one point, medically retired from football. Now, whoever's decision that was, whatever led into that decision, he, he on his own ends up transferring to Miami, sitting out a year, and then playing this past year, and had a tremendous season. You know, Miami was facing the loss of Gregory Rousseau, who decided to opt out of the season, and they had Phillips come in, and in a sense, Phillips outplayed what Gregory Rousseau did the year before. So I think as talented as he is, and how he has top 10 ability. NFL teams, when they draft in the first round, they want guys that are impact players that are going to be starters and star players for years to come. And so when you've got a guy that has concussions and has at one point medically retired from the game, that's going to scare some teams off. Now, I've seen some projections of Jalen Phillips going in the top 15. I don't think that's going to happen. I could very well be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll fully admit it. But I think there's a possibility that Jalen Phillips falls out of the first round. I don't think he's going to, but I think there's a possibility that he does just because when you're a second round pick, there's a lot less pressure if you miss on that guy. So I think he, he's going to go in the 20s. 
I think if he's available at Cleveland, that's an option. I think I wouldn't be shocked if the Titans took him. I wouldn't be shocked if the Colts took him. Um, there's a lot of teams the Bears could use an impact pass rusher. There's lots of teams in those 20s, these playoff teams that, that have good rosters that could take a chance on a Jalen Phillips. And so that's why I think in the 20s, the, you know, the, the mid to late 20s is probably where he's going to go. But once again, if he goes in the top 20, I'm not going to be surprised. I don't think he's going to go there, but I'm not going to be surprised. Just like I'm not going to be surprised if he falls into the second round. All right, that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode of The Film Room. Make sure the best way to get this is to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, so hit that subscription button. Hit the bell notification to know when all my new videos are out there. Uh, make sure you also follow me on social media. Draft underscore Brian is the way to go, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be, draft underscore Brian is the the handle that you need to follow. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time.